my notion of giving evolved, particularly after September 11th. Giving became something very different. It meant more, not just about dollars given, but about what you can do as an individual. Um, beca it became a new focus for me. The community after September 11th was, was truly devastated. It, it was a war zone. Every time you went downtown, you would be reminded that this had happened in hitting all the senses all at once. It wasn't just a photograph. It wasn't just uh, seeing it on the news. You were there. When we started the Tribeca Film Festival, that was both had a philanthropic element, but also a civic uh, element to it, which is how do you start to help rebuild the neighborhood? We started the festival as a way to bring people back down to Lower Manhattan. We created a reason for people to come back onto the streets and to start to celebrate, uh, which is part of the healing process. Initially, we thought we would put on a one-time event. We had no expectations. Uh, here we are going into our eighth year and it's really become almost a, one of the largest New York cultural institutions. Every uh, April and May, we put on the Tribeca Film Festival. One of the, the, the great uh, little jewels of the film festival, it turned out to not be so little, the Tribeca Family Festival, which really doesn't have much to do with film, but it has everything to do with community. And in our first year, it was almost an afterthought uh, saying, well, we should do something out on the streets because it'll give us another reason to bring people out. And I think in the first year, while we, were, we didn't even know what to expect, 5,000 people, 10,000 people might show up. The first year, we had 100,000 people showing up at our family festival. So this huge outdoor event became one of the most important elements that we had never even envisioned. One of the most interesting relationships that developed out of our family festival, um, Scholastic Books, the publisher of Harry Potter and the largest publisher in the world, was one of our sponsors. And they set up a huge tent and we had celebrity readings and Whoopi Goldberg was there, who's a huge supporter of Scholastic. And I started to meet the people at Scholastic. Really nothing to do with publishing from my perspective, but how that really fit into the community and the importance of children's books. The film festival and children's books are all about stories. In fact, whether it's a, a non-fictional uh, or fictional, it's a documentary, it's a narrative, all these are about great stories. So the festival is about storytelling. Um, in late 2004, early 2005, we came across a story about a baby hippo who was stranded off the coast of Kenya, rescued by a village of a thousand people and brought him to a, uh, a nature preserve in Kenya where he was uh, put into an enclosed area with a giant tortoise. And my young daughter and I saw this picture on January 1st, 2005. And I had written a couple of other uh, children's books with my older daughter, Juliana. It was now time to do a book with Isabella. We hadn't been able to find a book. We saw the picture in the paper together and she turned and said, Daddy, let's do our book about Owen and Mize. This is not a story that took place over a 24-hour period with one photograph of a hippo and tortoise. This is a relationship that lasted for two years with a 700-pound, 130-year-old tortoise raising what started off as a 600-pound hippo. And every time I get a new photograph or hear one of the latest uh, breaks from Kenya, I, I, it was almost hard to believe what was going on. We had this unbelievable true story. And it worked at so many different levels. The books tended to be about real life issues. So the first book was about 
Juliana having her tonsils taken out. We couldn't find a book that was out there, so we wrote a book about having your tonsils out. The second book was about September 11th, and we wrote it as uh, the true story of meeting one of the firefighters from our local firehouse who became a great family friend. The idea of finding real world issues really struck me and every time I took a look at the story of Owen and Mazze, every aspect, whether it was the science of it, the scientists couldn't explain what was going on, whether it was the emotional connection of friendship, uh, whether it was about how does a, a young animal, which kids can relate to, uh, experience an ordeal. Uh, it's about resilience, it's about hope. And so every time we looked at this, including even what I'll call the spiritual level, so no matter what level you picked at, if you looked at this story of a baby hippo being raised by a giant tortoise, it became an epic story. It became a Valentine's Day story. It was a story for orphans. Some of the um, letters that we got, kids who had cancer, it gave them hope. It's a story about friendship. What was fascinating was to see how many different things it meant to so many different people, but particularly to kids. So we, we had done two books on Owen and Mazze, and they were doing very, very well, and Scholastic said, gee, if you see any more of these animal stories, this is actually kind of working. And one of the new focuses uh, post-September 11th really became concern about the environment. And I was completely struck when I saw the green issue of Vanity Fair, where they had a picture of Leo DiCaprio on the cover with a little baby polar bear called Canute. I said, you know, this is kind of interesting. It's an, another animal story. It's about another orphan. I started to think about it a little. I said, well, okay, we've started dealing with these series of traumas, having your tonsils out, September 11th, loss of parent. And all of a sudden with Canute, this became a big issue about the environment. And the next thing uh, happened was we had a book called Canute. This idea of using a children's book and creating a children's book was incredibly empowering. And the idea that we were doing it in a slightly different, creative, innovative way. These were non-fiction books. These were not sort of the great fictionalized versions uh, that we all know and love. These were sort of like little mini documentaries that kids could relate to. It became thinking about using a children's book not just as a literary thing that you read in the library, but as a resource and a tool for kids, adults, and teachers. Kids will really be the next generation that are going to be able to address the issue. And what we found is that you don't have to be Bill Gates or Warren Buffett to help. Anybody can give. It can be a poem, it can be a drawing, it can be a song, it can be a group that raises a dollar a person. So we're now beginning to look at this opportunity for creative kids' philanthropy, empowering kids who really can change the world.